welcome to worship in Jesus' name. Today the prophet Amos calls for justice to roll down like waters. Paul urges us to encourage one another with the promised coming of the Lord. Jesus tells the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. Surrounded by the faithful of every time and place, we celebrate Christ's coming in our midst in the word of life and the feast of victory, the marriage feast of the church. We continue with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who calls us and claims us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus you are forgiven. By Jesus you are welcome. In Jesus you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Amos chapter 5. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion. It was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall, and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. A reading from Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Ah, and gloat over me, 
Turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter, the first 13 verses. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. So are you a winner or a loser? Winners and losers have been declared in our election cycle over the last week, not just on Tuesday night, and there are still yet some winners to, to be declared and certified, and all of those cases can lead to a sense, like a good baseball cliche, you win some, you lose some. Now, whether your candidates won or lost, I assume you all feel like winners looking at your social media feed. Quite different for you today, I assume, than it was a week ago with the lack of political ads. It's the same on, in the paper, TV, radio, wherever it is. I think we all feel like winners in that fact. But in reflecting upon where we stand as Iowans and Americans in our democratic process, that idea of winners and losers continues to strike me. It goes beyond just elections or politics, but kind of what it means to be a proud American. It is a great American way to be a winner. And if not a winner, to be seen and recognized as a winner and fighting the good fight. As our media has evolved and found various niches in their coverage, I see this more and more prevalent in how we have viewed politics. In sports, there's nothing but constant yapping on the TV. It doesn't matter what happens in a game or over a season, but as long as there are two sides and drama and something to debate about and yell about and tell someone that they are an idiot, then it makes for good TV. I've often heard people complaining of news not being partial. Where is that good old news where they just reported it? But yet I see the only ways for the media to create meaningful programming is to have two sides. To have a side with good and bad. You need that conflict, that tension, anything that makes a good movie or a good story. Again, it becomes an ever-present battle to create a winner and a loser. 
Someone has to win, someone has to lose. As a hockey fan, I'll be honest, it was telling to me how the NHL gave up on ties 15 years ago in their regular season. It had to go to a shootout because, heaven forbid, you have a tie in any sporting event. That's like kissing your sister, as many athletes have happened to say. And here in our gospel message today, Jesus has even more confusing speak. It seems not to speak of the unity of believers, no. It speaks to this very worldly, this very real idea that we have created of winners and losers. Quite different from this picture of the kingdom of heaven is not of this earth, as Jesus proclaims. Yet here we have a very clear sense of winners and losers. Five bridesmaids prepared themselves for the uncertainties and packed extra oil for their lamps, while five others assumed that everything would be right on schedule and they would only they would be absolutely fine with just what they had with their lamps. What many people see is a confusing action giving, given God's amazing grace that we talk about and feel so much, then those five who prepare foolishly are shut out from the great feast. Rather than our efforts to include, especially include all, this seems to be a message of exclusion. In our Lutheran lens, we can't help but ask, what does this mean? Or quite simply, seriously, how can this be? How can people be actually excluded from the great feast? In looking at how it could actually be, I am drawn to the emphasis that Jesus says to the disciples at the end of the passage to keep awake meaning to be prepared. This is in kind of contrast to bridesmaids falling asleep, not knowing when the bridegroom will come, and not having prepared that extra amount of oil for their lamps. However, when Jesus says, keep awake, he is using a more active verb. That's, that means make yourself alert. Make yourself alert. Jesus is asking for an active participation, through this whole story, not simply to be an observer waiting for that parade to come on by, but to actively participate, to actively wait, which seems a contradiction in terms, but that distinction is critical. Bridesmaids have been selected. They are the elect in this wedding party. They have been elected to be participants in this celebration. As Klein Snodgrass, a New Testament scholar, mentions in his commentary on the parables of Jesus and Matthew, Jesus' words call for this understanding, this alertness. He calls us to change our lives. It calls for us to live a life. It calls for us to live in an attitude, a commitment, and a lifestyle. We aren't simply baptized into the kingdom of God's future. We are called in that baptismal waters and in the light that we see to live into God's kingdom today, to live into the body of Christ. An idea of making myself alert reminds me also in this political climate of one of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther King Jr. that has become influential as I look ahead at the work that I have for myself as well as what I see for the work of the nation. In his sermon, when peace becomes obnoxious, given in Montgomery, he proclaims, Peace is not merely the absence of tension or conflict. It is the presence of justice. King is asking us not to simply sit by the side of the road and wait for the bridegroom to come. He's not asking us just to sit here in the pews or sit at home and just saying, man, I hope that things work out okay for us. He's not hoping for us just to pray for resolution of the problems of the weak and poor being ostracized and put at the margins of society. He is asking us not to sit by as white people and not understand the plight that the black people in this country have gone through for over 400 years. He is asking us to actively love our neighbor care for their needs, not just offering thoughts and prayers. It doesn't matter what party you belong to or any sort of mandate that a voting bloc may appear to have said in election results. 
He is asking us to work for justice, all of us to work for justice, to make peace. The ELC and other church bodies have mentioned so many times over the past few months and weeks that the role of a Christian in society is to take part in the democratic process, which is to vote faithfully and involve ourselves in the process. Well, as Jesus transforms us in the waters of our baptism, this church that we are all called to be a part of calls us to continue to work for justice, not just on November 3rd, 2020. It doesn't begin or end with a vote. It is an ongoing process to make peace each and every day. It is to acknowledge our sin of not wanting to help our neighbor or to wish ill on them for their partisan position. No, it is calling us to consistently remind and support the elected officials to look out for the welfare of all people, not just of a certain partisan leaning or certain power and have money and influence. And I admit, this idea of working for and achieving peace becomes more and more of a challenge for me. I look at this text, I look at five winners, and I look at five losers, and I wonder, how can Jesus shut the door possibly on those losers? How can Jesus shut the door on us if we just idly sit by and don't actually take that active participation role? It seems, to use a theological phrase that makes Lutherans cringe, it seems like works righteousness. It's an idea that we have to do something to earn this amazing grace that we've been given. You have to do something. It can't simply just be given to you. Yet, yeah, Luther, 500 years ago, as well as Dietrich Bonhoeffer, 100 years ago, will talk about us being bound to our neighbor. They will talk about being bound to our neighbor, to live out those words. Because it's the very thing that Jesus does. It is that Jesus is alert for us. So therefore, we are called to be alert and ready to serve our neighbor. Now, whether it's a freedom of a Christian from Luther or talk of cheap or costly grace by Bonhoeffer, it is Jesus who has done it for us, has done it all for us, so that we can then commit ourselves to this radical and loving way of life to love our neighbor as ourselves, regardless of partisan politics. It becomes so radical, so counter to what this world actually is if we can engage with one another, to listen, to help those in need. And as a reminder, we cannot do this simply on our own. As we talk about in the third article of the Creed, we cannot by our own way, understanding, or strength come to this belief as Jesus as our Savior and Lord, either in heaven or on this kingdom here on earth. It is the Holy Spirit that calls us and moves us closer to this Savior. And in encouragement and example, Jesus actually becomes the bridesmaid who is ready for us prepared for all that is in the way. He has prepared for our own plotting, our own doubts. He has prepared for the ups and downs of our daily life and challenges that we face in efforts to really live into our calling. He is ready. As we hear each Palm Sunday, the story of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, as the disciples struggle to stay awake, struggle to stay alert on that last day with him. It is the work of Jesus, the work of taking our sins to the cross and then conquering death in the resurrection. It is that Savior and Christ who is prepared and is always ready for you and for me. Always ready for us as we are called into the difficult road of making peace and seeking justice. Amen.
continue our service with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Savior and Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land and the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Holy and Immortal One, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of their own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, wherever and whenever you may be. I invite you to remember your baptism and share the peace of Christ with whoever you may come into encounter with today. Amen. Let us pray. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Receive the blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. A few announcements this, this day. Pastor Dennis is continuing his pastor's class on Sunday evenings on the YouTube channel. And I am continuing my uh, Parables of Grace on Wednesdays. 
uh, also on YouTube. I also want to say that uh, while we are now online completely for worship, Pastor Dennis and I are both available to provide pastoral care for you at any time. So please don't hesitate to call, send an email or a text. We are ready to help and serve you. God's blessings.